In this tutorial, what we're going to do is take a look at a few ways to draw some nice simple graphs in Excel. So what I've done here is I set up a few different example pieces of data and we'll look at the way in which we can plot some of those. So I started off by uh, producing something here that would lend itself well to perhaps a bar chart or a, a pie chart. So what I've got is I've listed all my pets and I've listed how many of them I've got in a nice simple table. So let's look at the simplest way to draw a graph. Uh, and the easiest way to do that probably would be just to highlight the numbers that we want to plot click on insert up at the top, you can see lots of different types of graph in here. And maybe I'm going to start off with a uh, simple bar chart or column chart as, uh, as Excel calls it quite often. I'll click there. I get lots of different flavors that I could explore and experiment with, so you can try some of those. Another two uh, 3D ones, they're quite tempting, aren't they? I must confess, personally, I tend to stick with 2D ones just because I find them easier to actually read when you want to look at the data. So I might grab one of those. Now this graph at the moment isn't perfect. For example, um, I don't know which one of these is cat, dog, chicken or fish, so my x-axis would benefit from some labels. My graph doesn't really have a title at the moment, so I'm just going to delete that graph and let's see if we can do something a little bit better. Because Excel's designed to work and they've anticipated how people are going to want to use it, you can actually give it a little bit more information. So I'm going to grab all of this data here, starting from the actual headings of my columns, uh, and all the, uh, the things I want on the x-axis as well. And I'm going to try that process again. I've insert, and I'll insert another graph. This time, it's a bit more like it. So I've got the name of the pet that I want, uh, I've got the frequency coming up the side as well, like so, uh, and it's chosen me, and it's elected to use that as the title of the graph. I can always change that by clicking once in here, and just typing in, uh, oops, uh, and then by typing in there something like um, pets I own, something like that. There we are, and I've got a nice graph. I could tweak it a little bit further by maybe choosing the bars and right-clicking on them and changing the color that they're filled in with to something else. Um, at the moment, they're all selected. If I clicked on this one just once more, you'll see that that's the only one selected now. So if I wanted that one to really stand out, I could give that a slightly different color to the others as well. So you could play around like that. Another type of graph I could use instead is a pie chart. That would be appropriate. Very straightforward. Again, select the data, insert. Uh, this time we'll use a pie chart. And again, you get a snazzy 3D one or just a nice flat top down 2D one that you can pick up there. Uh, these are nice. Once it's built, you can grab the slices of the pie if you want. You can pull some individual slices out a little bit just to again make things a little bit easier to, to read and explain and make a particular point if you wanted it. So that's very, very nice. And, uh, and you can play around with that. You'd also turn on the labels as well, so it shows you the percentages if you right click and play with the menus. Let's look at another one. What I've got this time is a slightly different type of graph. So this time I want to plot time against temperature. Uh, again, pretty straightforward though. I'm going to uh, show you a way of adding this time in retrospectively. Let's just start by drawing this graph. What I would expect, what you would expect perhaps, is to see a single line uh, with that on the x-axis and that on the y-axis. So it'd be roughly a straight line. It looks like it tapers off a bit towards the end. So if we try and insert that graph, I'm going to use a line graph this time, 2D line graph. What the computer actually does is it didn't quite get the hang of what we were asking for. So what it's done instead is it's plotted the time, which is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. You can see that over here. And then it's plotted the temperatures on a separate line. That's not really what we wanted. Let's see if we can get that better. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to start just by drawing the temperatures. So I'm going to grab that column of figures, go to insert, line, and line, and click that in. So that's part way there. So I've got the y-axis, that's working, I've got the correct values, I've got a fairly sensible term label as well at the top here, my chart title, but the x-axis is wrong. Let's go in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is how it's always going to do it, and what it should do is go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So I need to, uh, to format where the data comes from. So I'm going to click once on that y-axis set of labels. You see they're selected. And I'm going to right-click then. And the option I'm going to go for is this one here that says Select Data. And what I can see at the moment is that on here that the range of all the data that I want to plot, that's been taken from here. That sounds pretty sensible. And uh, it's saying, you know, it's going to be a load of temperatures. But here on the horizontal axis, it's using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and, and six, and I don't want that. So I need to edit where I'm taking those from. So I'm gonna click this edit button. You'll get a little teeny weeny window that's gonna appear here. It's asking you for where you wanna take your range of labels from. So all I'm gonna do is move the mouse over here, click and drag and pull down like that and then release the mouse button. So that's on sheet one, because this spreadsheet's called sheet one. 
uh, starting from G3 going up to G8. And it gives, gives me some examples of what that actually looks like practically. So I'll click on OK and click on OK. And now on my nice graph, I've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, just like I want it. So that's another way we can do it. Let's pop that to one side. Sometimes what you might want to do, this happens a lot in maths lessons, you may need to plot graphs of a particular uh, formula. So I've got here y equals x, that little symbol, that little thing, it's called the carrot by the way, that little carrot there means to the power of, so this is actually y equals x cubed. I want to draw and plot a graph of y equals x cubed. So to do that, the best way to do it is I've already set out my values in my x-axis that I'd like to use. I'm going to go from minus 10 to plus 10, I could go bigger if I wanted. And I need to then write the answer to uh, y equals x cubed in each one of these points down here. Now, obviously, we can use formula replication that we've used before. So I've only got to write the formula out once. So formula, let's go. It always starts with an equal sign. OK, and it's going to be equals this value here. That's my value of x on this occasion. So much I'll click on there. Blink. So that's b13 to the power of, so holding down shift, tapping 6 to get the little carrot, uh, and then it's cubed, that's to the power of 3, like that, and I can hit enter, and it'll calculate that for me. If it was a bit more complex than that, if I was saying, I don't know, to the power of 3 plus 2, then I could use some brackets, just like you would in a maths lesson. So I can grab this bottom corner down here, drag that, pull that down to about there, and the computer will calculate all the other values for me, on my uh, y equals x cubed graph. I can now plot that. So just like I did last time around, uh, I could I could grab all of these from here to here and get the computer to insert a line graph. But if I do that, I'm not quite getting what I wanted. My x-axis labels are wrong. I've got the overall shape of my graph in orange, but this, uh, this line along here, this blue line, that's just not what's needed. So I'm going to delete that. What I need to do instead is I'll start by just plotting the y component. So I'm grabbing just those, I'm going to insert, graph, 2D line, like before, so we're getting there. And then just like last time, I'm going to right click on my graph, select data, and I'm going to edit the data that I'm going to use. So I'm going to click on edit, and uh, what I'll be able to do then is just grab the numbers. I don't need to grab the X itself, that's not part of it, the actual numeric part is what I'm interested in. So I'm starting from here, pulling down to there, and clicking OK. So now I've got there as the yeah, the y equals x cubed graph. I might as well update that label. So y equals x to, oops, to the power of 3. It's not happening yet, is it? Uh, there it is. It's caught up. Graph. Something like that. And I've got another lovely graph. And again, if I wanted to, I could get the line and I could right click on that and I could change the line color. Uh, you can actually color in the background as well. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but by all means, have a little play around. But hopefully, now that gives you all the individual skills that you need to be able to solve most of the platinum badge task. There's one at the end about converting to text, but I will give you a little clue, which is if you look around in these menu options, you might find something uh, that'll help you with that when you approach that. But that's one of the last questions in the task. So that's graphs in Excel, and I will see you in the next tutorial.